Hello, it's the Bad Mini Painter, and um, Sundays are going to be uh, kind of a non-Warhammer 40,000 kind of video day. I don't know if you guys uh, noticed, but recently uh, Games Workshop decided to uh, resell old bottles, and um, we have Warhammer the Old World. Now, fun fact, uh, my very first uh, Games Workshop product was an army box for Tomb Kings. So naturally, I couldn't ignore that delicious box. Now, that was sold out everywhere. I got one now, but uh, what I could get was uh, the Tomb Guards. So I decided to pick up a box and try to paint them. I base coated them white, and uh, then I decided to go over all the bone parts with Ivory Tusk which is an eggshell off-white from uh, Two Thin Coats. Now, uh, the look I was going for with the bones is not the classic uh, skeleton uh, Ushapti uh, bone look, but uh, I wanted a more cold and grey kind of bone. Like you see in the box art, uh, by the way, I love the, the retro kind of boxes. It's just, it, it tickles my, uh, my inner child. So I give it a lay of that, and then I go over everything with a, a light uh, grey wash from uh, Vallejo. Um, it's uh, it's really good at at uh, at shading whites um, because it's it's not heavily pigmented. It it's kind of subtle, but you can definitely see a difference uh, without it just making everything grey. So stuff like the teeth and all that good stuff is already highlighted now, or uh, the details are brought out. And next I take a white star, also from two thin coats, and I do a light uh, dry brushing. And it was around this uh, point that I realized that these models are going to kick my ass. There are so many details and everything kind of uh, blurred into one big mess uh, for, <laughs> for my eyes. Um, and uh, yeah, first recommendation is wait until you've painted the shields before you glue them on. Because when they're on there, they're like the details, the, the arm inside, uh, the, the straps are absolutely impossible to, uh, to get to. I decided to uh, do most of the fabric in Eclipse Grey um, from Scale 75. And it's, it's kind of a warm-ish grey, um, I think maybe uh, Storm Vermin Fur is a, is a bit lighter version of that, a kind of a warm grey. And I decided to go all over the models and uh, do most of the straps uh, or fabric in um, in that color. Uh, I, I did decide to, uh, to add some variation later. Um, for the weapons or the, the handles on the spears, I decided to use Mephiston uh, Red. Um, my experience painting these models was that, oh my god, this is such a mess. This is never going to look anyway half decent. And I was borderline right. This is not my greatest paint jobs. Uh, and that's from a guy who has just destroyed paint jobs. Like, really made a mess of it. This, this is not my proudest moment, but I still thought it was an interesting video, so here we go. Um, yes, Iron Hand Steel uh, for the blades. Uh, there are some details on the blades that uh, that I decided to do in gold, based on the box art. And that's why I didn't do a lead belt job. Iron Hand Steel's, uh, Iron Hand Steel is a bit runnier, a bit thinner. Uh, so it doesn't clog up details uh, in the same awesome way that the uh, lead belcher does it. I decided to do my group with um, uh, one uh, uh, ten uh, what's it called halberds and uh, ten swords because variation is fun. Next, it's a retributor armor for all the gold, and that is the primary color on these models. The shield is gold, uh, there's some some uh, armor that is uh, gold, uh, the hats are gold, everything is gold. The handles on the sword is gold. So you're going to spend quite a lot of time painting gold. Uh, I do highly recommend thinning it down a bit, uh, especially if your pot is more than two seconds old, because it uh, it will clog up uh, quite a bit. Um, 
so I, I managed to fuck up uh, a couple of shields before I realized that I needed to add a, quite a bit of water. I, I do all my painting from a wet palette, so everything is kind of thinned down. Just by default, but the uh, this 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 uh, paint needs um, additional water. Uh, I decided to uh, to add some variation um, to the fabric and uh, do some of it in uh, steel legion drab, which honestly was a good decision because the the models were pretty um, well. Monochrome is not the right word, but uh, they were. There wasn't a lot of interest to them. They they look kind of stale and flat. Granted, that was before uh, before um, shading, but still, they they just look boring. Uh, finally, right line flesh shade for uh, all the gold, all of it, and there's a lot. And it adds uh, some warmth, it uh, uh, adds some details by running into all the recesses, uh, some gradation, so it's not just this flat gold, but uh, uh, everything starts to come alive slowly. Uh, it, it was a rough process. I, I can honestly say that I didn't particularly enjoy painting these models, and that's always a result, uh, resulting in a in in a less than ideal end product. Uh, I decided to do a black wash for all the fabric and the weapons. I went back and shined up the <laughs> shined up the handle just a little bit. I was about to say party shit, but there's a masturbation joke in there. You don't have to look hard for it. Uh, there are some uh, white details on the shields and I decided to use Corax white after shaking the pot for 19 hours. I don't know what exactly is wrong with Citadel whites, uh, but they just break apart. It's uh, they need to rework the recipe because your your competition is beating the living shit out of you on that point. I I think it's the pots, honestly. It's yeah. Um, and as one of the final details, uh, the the red and blue markings on the shields and on the hats and well, basically around on the models. Uh, I decided to use Mephisto Red for the red parts and uh, Kaeldor uh, Sky uh, for the blue. Because it's, it's a nice shiny blue. And honestly, at this point, I was just really, really tired of, of painting these models. So I decided to be kind of sloppy. I know I'm generally sloppy, but this time it was on purpose. And what you have to remember with a Horde army is that you're going to have to paint a lot of models and this is how you will see them on the battlefield, perhaps even further away, but this this is how they, they're gonna look. So putting an insane amount of time into every single model doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, it, it's solely up to your personal pride, your, your opponent is not going to notice if one skeleton has uh, something missing, or if a, a color uh, splotch is on the bone, or if you missed some fabric, or 19,000 handles as I did. Look for it, you can see it. Several places where I missed totally or partially. But my Tomb King army has started. And I, I, I know it's not Warhammer 40k, and uh, I should like that's that's what I'm doing and most of my subscribers is probably here because of that but come on like nostalgia so I bought the army box I bought pretty much all the boxes for the Tomb Kings that has been um, released as of right now and uh, I will be painting them up so it will probably be Sunday video content so I really hope you enjoyed this uh, because I sure as hell didn't enjoy doing <laughs> the painting. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's valuable. I know it's limited. And I really do appreciate that you uh, decide to spend 10 minutes uh, listening to me rambling on and uh, my horrible footage. Thank you. And have a good Sunday. <laughs>